This uh, video is about how to set up single sign-on between AWS SSO service and a sample SAML service provider. So in case you are not subscribed to my channel, you can subscribe it and I will be adding more videos related to single sign-on, OAuth, OpenID Connect. So let's take a look at how to do this setup. So I have already logged into AWS Management Console and I'm going to navigate to AWS Single Sign-On. So when you navigate to AWS Single Sign-On for the first time, it will ask you to enable that service. So you can go ahead and enable AWS Single Sign-On service. So it will take some time to or enable that service so once it enables the service you can choose your identity source uh, which is basically the identity store where all the user profiles will be stored for this particular setup we will leave it as AWS SSO which is the internal AWS SSO database so we don't have to do any changes in case you want to use an Active Directory or an external identity provider. You can change it here, but for this particular setup, you can just leave it as AWS SSO. And let's go ahead and add a test user, and I will just name it as test user one. And let's just generate a one-time password and let's uh, use this as example.com and let's use that same email address and first name is test second name is user and display name is test user and we don't have to create any groups right now let's just add this user and if you look at this password, this is the password. You can copy it. And this is the user portal URL. So let's open it in a new tab. It will show your login page. So let's wait for the login page to open. OK, so here you can enter the username, which is test user one and then the temporary password that got created and then you don't have to save it so it goes so you have to again re-enter the temporary password and it will ask you to set the new password yeah you can save it if you want uh, and it will log you in to the aws SSO dashboard so right now it's empty so we don't have to uh, we don't have any applications configured so it shows as empty which is fine so you can sign out of this dashboard and now let's go back to AWS SSO and if you go to the applications tab right now we don't have any application configured in AWS SSO so what we can do is uh, we can configure a test SAML application uh, to see how the single sign-on works between AWS SSO and the target SAML application. So for this purpose, I'm going to use the test SAML application provided by RSA. RSA is one of the leading security providers in the industry and you would have heard about RSA tokens in the past. So they have a sample application uh, for testing purpose. So if you search in Google for RSA SAML test, you will see a SAML 2.0 test service provider. And if you go to the instructions page and select IDP initiated SSO, it will show you the instructions on how to configure a sample IDP initiated SSO SAML setup for any identity provider. It can be AWS SSO or your own identity provider, like a Okta or any other industry leading identity provider. So, the main thing here is the metadata. So let's get the metadata from uh, RSA. And if you look at this metadata, the key elements are the key attributes, uh, the entity ID, which is uh, 
shown here and the location of the association consumer service url which is shown here so let's go back to aws console add a new application and let's select custom saml application and let's name it as rsc test saml and when you come to the application you can leave all these things default when you come to the application metadata section you can mention if you don't have a metadata file you can manually type so click that link and it asks for the application ECS URL and this is the application ECS URL just copy it and paste it here and then you have the uh, entity ID copy that value and that is the application SAML audience paste it here and save the changes and the next thing is attribute mapping so you have to tell what all attributes should be sent for this particular application which is uh, which uh, is protected by saml so let's go to again google go to aws sso attribute mappings and if you go here So here, if you see the supported AWS SSO attributes, it says uh, these are all the attributes that can be sent in a SAML session. So the subject attribute is the default attribute that will be sent in a SAML session it, in the subject name ID format. You can check the SAML specification for that. So you need to at least map this particular attribute for the SAML. So let's add user subject as the value here and format as unspecified click save changes and when you go to the assign users you can go and assign this test user to this application so now this test user is assigned to this application so now again you go back to the dashboard link you will see the user portal url open it in a new tab and you can log in using that uh, same credentials the test user one so i already saved the password so it's automatically populating it just click sign in so you can close this window the rsa test provider so now you are seeing one application here in the user's login now because we have already added that application and assigned to this user so this is a Mozilla browser, Firefox browser that I'm using and in Firefox there is a very good plugin called SAML Tracer. So if you have not used it before, I would recommend you to install this SAML Tracer. So if you search for Firefox SAML Tracer in Google, you will get this plugin here and you can install it. I have already installed it. So this is the that plugins uh, icon so you just click it and you will right now it's empty so now you go back to that um, aws sso dashboard and click this link it will try to open the link in a new tab and if you see here uh, it shows that users detail the test user one so this particular SAML assertion was successful so you successfully fed it into this demo site and below you will find the SAML assertion information right now it's only this one attribute that is being sent so now let's slightly modify that application to add some additional attributes in the SAML assertion so if you go back to the attribute mappings I can add some new values so let me add a given name okay and if you look at the AWS SSO attribute mapping document a given name is mapped to this particular attribute so you can give this attribute here similarly let me add last name and if you look at this uh, so this is the one family name so just add that one let's save the changes and now if you see if I click this again it will again post a SAML assertion back to RSA test SAML service provider so you are again seeing that hello test user which is the name of that user so if you go to this user profile the display name of that user is test user and that's what you see your hello test user 
then you see the uh, name id value is test user one and then if you go to the attribute details section you will see last name attribute is user given name attribute is test so if you go to this user profile the first name is test last name is user now let's add one more attribute which is the email address so again go back to the application attribute mapping screen copy user dot email user colon email and let's add the email attribute and then yeah you can save changes so now if you again launch this application using saml it will post a saml assertion back to this rsa test saml service provider and these things are we already looked at it let's go to the attribute statement and you will see the email attribute is also posted in the saml assertion so now if you see uh, if you look at the uh, saml assertion so this is the saml assertion that was posted to from aws sso to this rsa test saml service provider so if you scroll down here to the end of the saml assertion you will see all the attributes here so the uh, name id value is here uh, i think it's not visible somehow so you might have to scroll yeah the name id value is test user one and then if you look at here uh, you have different attribute names like uh, so if you look at yeah here you have last name which has the attribute value of my last name then you have the email address and then you have the given name so you can see the saml assertion in this service provider itself uh, but it still extracts all those details and prints it nicely in a UI format. So, so this is how you configure a SAML application in AWS SSO and then assign that application to a specific user and then that user can view that application here and launch that custom SAML application uh, using SAML Federation. So that's it for this particular uh, setup and uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave your comments in case you have any questions and I can reply back to your uh, comments with the answers. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video.